I have to say it here in this video. I think Verizon and AT&T look really bad right now. And actually, I should say, I can't really put Verizon in it just yet, but they have been discussing price hikes. But AT&T has already done that with legacy plans. The expectation is that they might do it again with some other plans and then Verizon get involved. And here is U.S. Cellular guaranteeing no price hikes with us. This according to Monica Alvin. This is a May 6th story. Uh, FierceWireless.com, link in the description. All right, let's look at the deets here. AT&T has committed to raising prices on some of their legacy plans. U.S. Cellular, on the other hand, says we're not going to raise prices for postpaid or prepaid customers through 2023. All right, so that's that's got good and bad to it, right? It confirms that they probably will raise pricing after 2023. But between now and then, they won't be raising prices. I suppose that's a win for customers for the time being. All right, so they are saying now through at least December 31st, 2023, committed to no cost increases, no plan pricing increases, no matter what plan there are. And customers don't have to act in any specific way to get this locked in. Uh, customers shouldn't need to worry about the wireless rates going up. Whether they're a new customer or they've been one for years, the rate plan will not increase. This according to the U.S. Cellular President and CEO Laurent, LT Threville, Therival. my bad. <laughs> We're committed to being transparent with our customers. We want them to have peace of mind knowing that if they don't want to make a change, we won't change a thing. All right, good stuff there. Uh, they do offer, uh, I think, the ACP program with some of their plans. It looks like in this instance, uh, U.S. Cellular had net losses of 44,000 postpaid subs in the first quarter of this year. ARPU at almost 50 bucks. That's pretty good. Postpaid churn was 1.10. So customers have been leaving them. That That's a little bit elevated there. But this should actually help. This could give customers confidence to stay. That should help with the churn and the retention. And if AT&T maybe bumped up pricing on some customers and they're in a U.S. Cellular market, they might look at them as a legitimate option now because they feel confident in their pricing. Uh, they also um, are launching some fixed wireless access through millimeter wave in some markets, so that could also pull some um, some customers their way. This is smart. This is very smart on U.S. Cellular's part. All right, <laughs> dropping bars. 4.3 million postpaid subs. They had a bad quarter. Time for them to maybe do something proactive, getting out and ahead of it and uh, giving customers confidence maybe getting them to shift over to them in a positive way by guaranteeing pricing and locking in those customers with no increases in the near future. So that's good. I, I think this is brilliant. You know, the at and is moving the opposite direction. Verizon probably is too. And T-Mobile and U.S. Cellular doing the right thing for their business, in my opinion, to help them grow. Uh, last story here, Fierce Wireless, also Monica Alvin, May 6th. Dish doesn't plan to ask for extension to 5G network build. Okay, I got a link in the description for both the articles from today. Uh, you guys can check those out if you want to. Highlights, though. All right, it's been speculation that Dish isn't going to hit their mark. They're not going to get to the 20% POPs coverage uh, by their June 20-something date. I don't, for some reason, June 23rd strikes, but I, I could be wrong about that. But So don't quote me on the exact date, but it's like mid to late June. They got to get to 20 million pops covered for the U.S. Or, uh, excuse me, 20% of the pops covered here in the U.S. And here's President Charlie Ergen coming in and saying, we don't have any plans on asking for an extension. He's saying that their deadline is going to be met. He says, we're just going to get it done. No need for the extension. Uh, they don't need to ask for it. They don't want it. They want to keep their nose to the grindstone and do what we said we're going to do. I respect this. I really do. I, you know, I, that's the mentality I like to see. Uh, it's the mentality that, you know, I think a good business, uh, fierce competitor takes this approach as well. He says here, we have a can do attitude. This is a great project. We've been through it before. This isn't our first rodeo. I love it. I mean, if you guys are looking for, um, if you're looking for an underdog to root for, I think Charlie Jurgen and Dish are the one. Uh, we can't really call T-Mobile an underdog anymore. You know, they've merged with Sprint. They're a big company now with tons and tons of subs. AT&T and Verizon are hard to root for. They, they want to raise prices all the time. Uh, what they've done to people in the past, they're not likable. And 
this might be kind of the underdog to root for as they're coming in as a new entrant. And I know a lot of people have called Charlie Ergen and Dish spectrum hoarders and spectrum squatters and all of that. And, and that's warranted. They didn't do anything up until now. But at some point, you just got to look at it in a different light. They're coming in with no customers. What do they have? Eight million Boost Mobile customers, right? They need to address that. They've been losing share. That's got to improve. And here they are, you know, doing their thing, building out a network. And uh, they got to get to that 20% mark. Oh, here it is by June 14th. All right. So I was way off. I said June 23rd. It's June 14th. I knew it was somewhere in there, man. My bad. Uh, They're going to start selling service at 30 bucks a month through Project Genesis, kind of like the beta testing. Uh, but Las Vegas is their official launch, and they got more more coming here. And uh, I'll be sure to get a phone and a line through Boost Mobile, um, excuse me, through Dish Wireless as soon as it comes here to the CLE. And I'm rooting for them. I really do mean it, guys. When I say I'm rooting for the underdog and I want competition, I will put my money where my mouth is. I will you know, pay for the service. I will try it. I will support them as they try to shake things up in the industry and do something different and compete. All right. I'm not here to pretend like I want competition. I really do mean it. All right. And that's one of the things that I think a lot more people should probably look into, you know, in terms of their approach. How do you look at Dish Wireless? Stop looking at them as an enemy to competition and actually treat it as a, you know, a true competitor. And and they got to hold up their end of the bargain and build a network. And they trust me, they got enough obstacles. All right. And then 12 gigahertz frequencies for fixed wireless. This is huge. I'm, I may actually do a dedicated video on this. Let me know if that's what you guys want to see. Comment down below if you want to follow up on that. That's a whole nother story with huge fixed wireless access ramifications with that satellite spectrum potentially coming to terrestrial wireless. That would be huge for all the carriers, by the way. That, and that would be good for the competitive market. But that's the news for the day. That's the dish news. Uh, that is the uh, U.S. Cellular News. What do you guys think? Comment down below. You are the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard. Like, share, subscribe for more, and turn on that bell notifications icon so you never miss an upload. Thank you for watching. We shall see you all on the next video. Peace.